So if you go into the comment section of Podcastage's review of this microphone, you will see our boy Fluff. Ryan Bruce. If you don't know him, he's another amazing audio YouTuber. He described this microphone as follows. If The Incredibles had a podcast, they would use this mic. And this is exactly right, and it brings me to a larger topic that I want to discuss today with this review. And we'll use the King B to discuss this broader topic. We've kind of talked about it a little bit in, in certain sections of certain reviews, especially with the SM7B, but I want to talk about the importance or unimportance of microphone aesthetics. So, but before going any further, you should know that this was sent to me by Neat Microphones. In fact, I had some cool conversations with the company Leeds on Zoom about this microphone. I got some cool info for you. But it's important that you know that. I didn't get paid. I don't have to say anything specifically. This was no strings attached. I didn't even have to do this review. So I know there's gonna be some of you that just think this is not really a, a legitimate topic to discuss at all, and that's a perfectly fine position to take. But for me, and for many others, I would have to disagree, just to some extent. Content creation has made microphones more than just a recording device. It is literally part of your set. There are certain streamers and certain personalities that are heavily associated with a certain microphone. For example, Anthony Fantano uses the RE20. For many, PewDiePie is associated with the C414. That is, until he upgraded to a lavalier mic to a headset. The TLM 103 is perpetually associated with Howard Stern. And there are brands that place much more of an emphasis on microphone aesthetics than others. For example, no one does it better than Blue Microphones. Now, Blue actually has a massive influence on Neat Microphones, and that's something I learned by talking to some of the company heads. Some of the people at Neat Microphones have designed some of the most famous, iconic Blue Microphones over the course of Blue Microphones' entire history. And that includes the Yeti. But why do you think the Yeti or the Snowball are as popular as they are? Why do you think Blue Microphones are in every retail outlet from Walmart to Best Buy, and you hardly see any other pro audio companies in that space? Because they're more than just audio devices. They appeal to a certain aesthetic and a certain design language. They're crafting a very consumer-friendly aesthetic. So, side note, for those of you who don't know, I actually went to design school. I have my undergraduate degree in architectural design. And I'm actually not necessarily a complete follower and fan of the famous form follows function. See, I think it kind of pinholes you into a certain kind of aesthetic and a certain kind of design language. And, you know, some of the most amazing objects ever created do not follow follow this same language. There would be no Statue of Liberty, there would be no Eiffel Tower if we all decided everything that is aesthetic needs to be based on some sort of function. The Eiffel Tower serves no purpose. It's got one room, two rooms in it, a restaurant, I don't know, not a lot. Also, now that I think of it, both the Statue of Liberty and the Eiffel Tower are French. And dude, have you ever seen French cars? I don't know, maybe it's just a French thing wild. Now, Neat is placing a big focus on the aesthetics of their microphone. I mean, have you guys seen the first generation King B? It was literally black and yellow, like a bee. This one has a honeycomb aesthetic to it. And this is clear even how they market this microphone. Go look at their Instagram. There's so much gaming content on their Instagram, and I'm sure a lot of that has to do with the fact that they're owned by Turtle Beach, but still. That's also why this thing is massive. It's huge, and it's heavy, and it's got a lot of presence on camera. It is really like a Pixar interpretation of a microphone. And you know what? That's awesome. At first, I questioned the size, and I questioned the weight, and I questioned the practicality of this microphone. But I feel like I wasn't getting it at first. I wasn't getting what this microphone was intending to do. As I said before, sure it is a tool, sure it is a recording device, but it is also kind of a set piece. It wants to be on camera, and it wants to be in a Pixar film. So that's all well and good, but how does this thing actually sound? Well, the specs are absolutely amazing, especially for a $170 microphone. It meets all the marks you would expect, and it exceeds them in a lot of really key areas. For example, this thing has an incredibly low self noise of 6 dBA. That is insane for a $170 microphone. And it kind of puts it in a class of its own for budget voiceover mics. I mean, voiceover, whenever you're working in an environment where it is just your voice and nothing else, you need to worry a lot about self noise. And if you're not spending, you know, 250 or up, a lot of these microphones have very high self noise, things like the AT2020 and like the Samson C01. But for something in this range, it's kind of unparalleled. It makes it sort of the only option for a condenser 
condenser microphone on a budget. Also, I think the stereotype that a voiceover microphone should be a little bit darker and a little bit flatter rings true with this microphone. It's not particularly bright. It does have a high shelf that you would see on something like the NT1, but it's a pretty mellow sounding mic. In fact, here's the frequency response. You're gonna notice it has kind of a, a flat sort of response with a boost in the high range, and that's pretty typical, but I do not think this frequency response quite does it justice. I think it is kind of more low end focus than you might expect given this frequency response. It is characteristically darker than a lot of other condenser microphones on the market, and I think the most incomparable tone would be the Rode NT1. It is probably a little bit less sibilant and is a little bit more effective at room rejection, although it is not amazing at room rejection. I'd probably put it in like the, the average ish. So let's do a quick synopsis then. Let's do a blind voiceover test of the Rode NT1 versus the Neat King B. So the other day I was riding the subway to the airport and the subway to the airport is always the most shady of the subways for me. Just because there's the most scammers on that subway, I think people realize that that's where tourists are, so you're more likely to scam them out of their money that way. That's all well and good, but there was one person that was just straight up selling weapons. That can't be legal, right? He was selling tasers, military grade knives, and pepper spray. And, and mind you, this man was dressed all in full camouflage, combat boots, camouflage pants, camouflage shirts, and a full military grade camouflage backpack. And I was sitting there and I was kind of scared, didn't know what I was supposed to do. And this man sold like five tasers on the subway. But what was shocking was the kind of people that bought from him were not the kind of people that you would expect to buy from him. There was a mom that bought a taser. There was an old man that bought a taser. Everyone was pretty interested in the tasers. I, I don't know. Sometimes there's cops on these things, and I, I would imagine that they would stop this from happening, but I've seen it a couple times. Yeah, man. New York is wild. Microphone one was the King B and microphone two was the NT1, not pictured here. So here's my synopsis of this microphone. The Neat King B is one of the best microphones that you can buy in its class of like zero dollars to two hundred dollars. I would say probably the best. And this is for condenser microphones specifically. And especially if you're looking for a voiceover microphone, I think this is unparalleled in its self noise in this class, as far as I'm aware. As a studio object, it's a bit unwieldy and a bit impractical, but I don't think that's that big of a deal. I mean, it just kind of means that I can't set it on the shelf that I do with all my other mics. It sits on the table alone and sad. But that's because it wants to be the star of your next live stream. It wants to be a set piece and something to create a, an aesthetic around, basically. It's a little bit like that Shure Super 55, those microphones that you would find in the 50s. It evokes that kind of response, although in this case, it's less of a classic nostalgia response and it's more of a cartoony Pixar-y response. So let's do a singing test with our designated singer at this point, Ethan Toga. Go check him out on Instagram here. It's just going to be this microphone as a singing test. We're not doing a direct comparison today. And then we will also do an acoustic guitar test. I'm on the edge of going crazy. I've been talking with a dog and he tells me that it's clear that I've been cooped up too long all my thoughts are small distractions pacing circles round my head there's no job for me to get to so i'll stay right here in bed i take walks around the block but i've been sleeping more than most never much for sitting still but now i get my healthy dose all my thoughts are small distractions pacing circles round my head if there were signs that led to structure well they must have been misread i'm on the edge of going crazy i've been talking with a dog and he tells me that it's clear that I've been cooped up too long. All my thoughts are small distractions, pacing circles round my head. There's no job for me to get to, so I'll stay right here in bed. I take walks around the block, but I've been sleeping more than most. Never much for sitting still, but now I get my healthy dose. All my thoughts are small distractions, pacing circles round my head. If there were signs that led to structure, well, they must have been misread.
Okay, folks, I hope that was helpful. You can follow me on Instagram here. You can also work on a project with me by emailing me here at realaudiohaze at gmail.com. And with that, I will see you in the next video. Goodbye. <laughs>